Welcome back to the Jeff Crilly Show. Uh, Matt Oliver may be the tallest guest I've ever had. How tall are you, Matt? Uh, about 6'5". Six 6'5". Five. Six five. He looks a little bit like Clark Kent. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so, uh, and when he's not being Superman, he is uh, helping championing the... Um, the Trinity River Vision Project. Would you explain what that is, Matt? Sure, absolutely. And, you know, and not to go in, you know, you can talk for, for half an hour on kind of the detail with it and go into it, but really when you think of it, a lot of times people around the DFW area, when you think waterfront, your heads go to San Antonio. So a lot of times people think they've had the fantastic vacation, they went there as a kid. It is what we're creating on the just north side of Fort Worth, directly north of downtown Fort Worth, is basically very similar to the San Antonio River Walk, but on a much, much, much larger scale. Um, we're creating that waterfront kind of development and atmosphere that you see in San Antonio, but at the same time, there's a, a flood control need for it in Fort Worth. Wow. Well, c- can describe that area because some people s- think Trinity River and they think, "Ooh, that's isn't that dirty <laughs> and nasty?" And I mean, what is it? What, tell me what you're dealing with. Absolutely, and that's to be honest with you, around the Trinity River, when you said it, I I grew up around here, would have the same thought that that has been one of the biggest hurdles to make sure that people are or try and get people to embrace being near and even on the river in Fort Worth. But what you see right now is, you know, the Trinity River comes out of a couple of lakes west of Fort Worth, and then it runs through basically downtown. I mean, about as close as you can get to downtown Fort Worth. And the area we're redeveloping is walking distance north of downtown. When people think of going north in Fort Worth, you think of the stockyards, you think of Joe T. Garcia's. We're looking at between downtown and those areas. Got it. And you're doing some cool stuff you have for the last few summers. Uh, d- describe the the kind of party on the pond there. What you- sure. <laughs> I like that. I like party on the pond. You know, you mentioned how people view the river a lot of times, and in, whether you're in Fort Worth and Dallas, one of the weirdest things that I will not, you know, bore anybody with or go into at all is when you think of the water quality in the river, Fort Worth has the only urban section of river in the state that you can actually get in. Now, you can paddleboard, kayak, canoe in Dallas, areas of Houston, San Antonio, until you're blue in the face. But as far as getting in, swimming in that water, you are just lucky that Fort Worth happens to be upstream from any wastewater treatment plants. So you are looking at lake water in Fort Worth. Now, because of that, we spent, you know, years and a mistake on, on our part, my part, is we go to people and say, hey, look, here's testing. The river's safe. You can get in. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to listen to me show you stats from TCEQ to say it's safe. But what we tried a few years ago, we just went into our seventh year um, of the, the event specifically you're talking about is Rock in the River. And it is a concert on the river where you are in an inner tube watching the concert. So your seat for it is in an inner tube in the Trinity River just north of downtown. Seven years we've been doing it. The first year we had a bus that fit 42 people. We had 42 people. I mean, I knew, <laughs> I knew every one of those 42 people. That's me calling like, friends. Hi, like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Come in, get in this water with me. Now, I mean, the last one we had for this season was two Saturdays ago. I bet we had about 2,200 people out there. Wow. Over there. And so, I mean, the, and it is literally a free concert. I'm watching music from an inner tube on the river. Well, describe the music. Sure. It's a, a lot of times, you know, we're, we're in Fort Worth, we're in Cowtown, so it has that sort of red dirt, Texas country, Americana kind of feel. We, we really, um, we branded out this year to where it used to be Thursday nights. We had two bands. It was on Saturdays. We had five. So at that point, we really were able to branch out and bring in a lot more local acts, acts from Austin, get all different kinds of music. And you're doing a lot of public speaking these days. Uh, t- tell me about that. You're going around to different civic groups or? Anybody that listen to me talk. I mean, that's, <laughs> <laughs> we're, you know, and I'm not, you know, we're not out, I'm not out fundraising. I'm not looking for that. We are just trying to tell people in Fort Worth, Dallas, and in between what's happening in their backyard. I mean, that's really it. It's, you never know the idea that, that somebody has just that idea because maybe they've been to one event. Maybe they've read something in the newspaper, but really have no idea the grand kind of vision of, of the River Vision Project and what Panther Island is. And so that idea is kind of, we're out there just telling them about it, just giving them the brief information. Hey, I don't need anything from you, but just so you know, this is happening. Well, t- tell me what you guys need. Do you need developers? Do you need f- funding? What, uh, in order for this Riverwalk uh, dream to come true, what do you need? I mean, we're, we're in a great spot as far as what is happening, as far as what's developing, we're going. When you look at the funding, when you look at major development, I mean, the first apartment complex down there breaks ground in a couple months. I mean, wow. we're going, this is a long-term infrastructure project that we can go into the boring parts of it, but they're necessary for sure that you're looking in the next eight, 10 years. But as far as development, it's occurring. I mean, we're, we're moving as far as what w- would help us with people. I mean, it's, it really is the idea of people getting out using the river and whether that is in Dallas, Fort Worth. I mean, that's even if somebody that, you know, if you're from Austin and I show you we're kayaking, canoeing, you go, great. We've been doing that for years. But when you talk about in the DFW area, utilizing the Trinity River to 
for recreation. I mean, that that's a new concept still. You know what you need? A Macero restaurant is what you need. <laughs> it just draws them in. It's standing room only. That's right. You read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, you know, we were talking about him before the, the Clear Fork development, where that's going. It's fantastic. I mean, it has nothing to do with P- Panther Island is what we refer to the district and that development. But you look around in Fort Worth. I talk about doing that tubing event seven years ago was that 42 people got on the river. I mean, you did not have a restaurant that embraced being near the water, anywhere near where you would want to put a patio near the river's edge. You look now in Fort Worth, the way we're growing. I mean, the Clear Fork, uh, Waterside the river district. I mean, all these developments are popping up that in their name, they're having to do with, Hey, look, we are close to the water. We're embracing that. And even five years ago, you were not seeing that at all. What's it like working with the city of Fort Worth? So it's a, it's a different, their city of Fort Worth's a partner on the project that we have. And, and they're a fantastic partner. Really. It's the most interesting part of this project is when you look at it as a whole, half of the funding comes from the federal government, half is locally. When you look at the local entities involved, it is the Tarrant regional water district, the city, the county, Streams and Valleys is a fantastic nonprofit. I mean, they were, a, they were a group of women in the late 70s who said, hey, we have this river in Fort Worth. We should do something with it. I mean, that was, the, was their whole, whole thing at first. But you're looking at a lot, a lot of entities that go around to make this thing happen. Wow. And so do you visit other cities? Uh, we talked about San Antonio, but do you see what other cities have done and how they've done it? Absolutely. I mean, we, as far as going to look at, you know, how can we not recreate the wheel? How can we not, uh, you know, make some of the same mistakes at the same time and sort of look off other pieces? When you look at Bricktown and Oklahoma City, you look at San Antonio. I mean, we go up to fantastic is in Vancouver. Granville Island is a beautiful example of you can go on a mile and a half stretch and you can be on a bike and go through a public market a, you know, a, a restaurant, a park, a, a district that has a lot of mixed use development all in one stretch and it's all along the water. And so that was a very cool example and really anything in between. It's looking at anything we can piece together from parts of it because th- there's not one I can point to to say, look at this. Here's your example. This is exactly what we're going to do. Right. You can take pieces from a lot of them and that's what we're trying to do. Just in, in terms of how the, the, uh, the river runs, um, mm-hmm. do you guys have it a lot easier than Dallas does? Because I know they've been trying to develop that. They're Trinity. You know, it's better be lucky than good, I think is the answer to that question that, you know, San Antonio, and without boring anybody with, but, you know, when you look at San Antonio, what they were able to do, there was a U in the river, the shape of a U that makes San Antonio, you cut that U off. Now you have the river walk. The whole idea is, you know, it can rain for 24 hours a day for that the water in the San Antonio river walk, that channel is not going to change. They control that. Got it. We're lucky in Fort Worth on a much bigger area. We have a U just north of downtown, the way the river runs, we're able to cut that U off. Dallas doesn't run that way, so they wouldn't be able to do that the exact same way. Nothing we did that was right, and it's no fault of Dallas. It just happens to be the, the kind of geography, the way the river runs in Fort Worth. Wow. And you've been there since the very beginning? Close. I've been there about eight years, almost going on close to nine. Uh, you were 2006 was really the first time when we did our environmental impact statement with the Corps of Engineers. 2008 was really we are buying property, environmental cleanup. Uh, moving utilities, all the necessary work in the area. And then a couple of years ago, we just started really, it was exciting, that major construction. Because when I look at the two things going around giving presentations that people ask about it is, I mean, I would like to see construction that I can talk to a group and go, hey, why don't you go down there and see it? Because when we're buying property, just because there's a chain link fence around a building down there doesn't make you go, oh, cool, there's that that project that guy was talking about, right. that this big San Antonio River Walk, but we're there now. I mean, we're building bridges. We're close to actually digging out this whole channel. And then the development. I mean, that's the other one, that when that kicks off in a couple of months, that's what people want to see. They want to see when is Panther Island going to happen. And so describe it. Will, will there be shops and restaurants? and? Absolutely. Um, the zoning, we don't own every piece of property on there. We rezoned it through the city, and it is a two-thirds mixed use is what kind of that zoning is. So we change from, historically, it's been heavy industrial. I mean, battery reclamation plant, one of the largest manufacturers of styrofoam in the country, refineries. I mean, that, that's what was down there historically. So a lot of environmental cleanup went into that. But we rezoned it to a two-thirds mixed-use residential. You're looking at about 90% of that area at about five- to nine-story mixed-use development. A lot of that... You know, it, it, it is very different than San Antonio because what you're going to see down there is density. We're putting people, apartments, condos, we're we're trying to create a district for Fort Worth. It, it's not just a, nothing wrong with San Antonio, but it is not a tourist attraction. I mean, it really is a new district, a new area for Fort Worth as a whole, a new neighborhood. Uh, the mayor of uh, San Antonio is on the phone. They hit. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> he would like a, to rebut that. Yeah. No, um, okay, so um, Matt, give us the website. How do people get a hold of you and, and learn more about you? Sure. So it's 
trinityrivervision.org for all the project information. If you want to see, you know, the, the bypass channel, everything that goes into it, all the infrastructure. Then we also have our, our event venue we talked about is Panther Island Pavilion. And so that is pantherislandpavilion.com. Awesome. Matt, you've been a great guest. I appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for having me, Jeff. <laughs> When we come back, it's called The Study, and it's helping small businesses get off the ground in Irving. That story is just ahead on The Jeff Curley Show. You're listening to The Jeff Curley Show on Talk Radio 1190. 